So hello everyone, my name is Rachel Lally and this is the first in a series of videos that um, I've been inspired to make by an interview that I did with the poet Emmett O'Brien. And during the discussion, um, I realised, I guess, that as a drama facilitator and as an actor, I have learned a lot of performance skills over the years and um, some of these things are second nature to me, but they are things that a lot of people performing um, maybe don't have the ability to learn about. Um, so this is like a little series of, of videos that I'm hoping to make that will give some advice, some tips, explain some things to performers that maybe they already know, but they don't know what they're called, or maybe some things that um, as trained actors or trained performers that we learn about that, um, well, because we don't have performance or drama on our curriculum in this country that I suppose lots of people don't know about or they don't have the opportunity to learn. So um, I put a little message around yesterday and I asked people like what they, think they would like to learn about um, and there's been lots of interesting responses um, and I suppose one of the main things lots of people are asking about is movement when they're performing or just general performance tips. So um, I'm going to start off with talking about that. Um, so um, when it comes to movement, there are so many things to consider. So I always say to people like in in order to think about where to go with movement um, and performance, you first have to experience being neutral. And that is being still and being able to deal with focus, which is focus is a term that I use and is generally used, uh, which means that, you know, the experience of being watched by people and I suppose the experience of being watched is is kind of a strange one because it's not something that we do in everyday life. So if you kind of go anywhere and sit and stare at someone, it comes across as something that is very predatory. It's very aggressive, strange, and um, it makes people feel uncomfortable. And in a normal situation, being observed or being watched or having to deal with focus usually signals that you're in danger somehow or that there's something wrong with you. Like you have something on your face or you're, you've put your clothes on strangely or you look weird um, and, and therefore you're inviting people to stare at you. So actually, when we as performers go on stage in front of people, um, especially for the first time or people who maybe are less experienced but even even after years of performing people can experience some of the the fight or flight response that 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 simulates um when you're when you're on stage being watched by people um, and it's really natural and it's something that we as humans have evolved to do in order to protect ourselves but when we are performing it's an artificial environment and actually the only situations where we ask people to watch us or we are observed in that way is when we're performing or when you're teaching there is no other situation that i can think of maybe there are some that i that haven't come to mind where we just sit and stare at somebody um and it can be really intimidating. And also you can be standing in front of people who are like, right, you know, entertain me. What have you got? And and sometimes people come in with very negative, um, with a very negative mind frame and, and they're waiting for you to deliver something because you are the performer, you're the person performing. So this is going to be just talking about being still. So if we can learn to be still and be comfortable with stillness and being watched um, in the next few videos, I can talk about where to go from there. But definitely the first step is to learn what you do as a person, because we all have little things that we do when we're being watched um, and little habits and stuff. So I'm going to talk about those now. 
So a good thing to do, um, which might be difficult at the moment, is to literally ask someone or go into a group where people can actually look at you or watch you. So if you can go into a circle and have people sit around or just stand in front of a room of your friends and have them watch you and see what happens. How do you respond? What are your habits? So um, something there's something called morphic resonance and that is a feeling that we have naturally as humans with being watched. And when scientists study this, they discovered that like people know when they're being watched, even randomly, 50% of the time they guess accurately that somebody is watching them. So whether that's on a CCTV camera or that someone's observing them somehow, we intrinsically know that something is not right or that somebody is watching us or observing us somehow. And there are things that we do when we go into that flight, fight or flight response, um, which affect our performance as performers. So it's really important that you are aware of what those are for you. And um, so um, one really common one is checking yourself, because like I said, usually people are staring at you because in everyday life, there's something wrong with you or you stand out or your hair is all over the place or there's something on your face or your zip is down or something like that. So um, one of the, the checking kind of things that we do and you'll often see like if you're in a group of people and someone stands up and everybody's everybody turns to look at them just because they've moved or they've walked in the door or something, they'll like fix their hair or pull down their clothes or adjust something. So that's all like checking movements that we do and lots of people do it on stage so if you watch any uh, videos of people performing especially people starting out you will see them do the, the kind of checking actions so have a look and see if there's any that you manage to notice put them in the comments i'd love to love to know about them um, another popular one is deflecting. So like when you have the attention of everyone, you're trying to desperately get it off yourself. So you'll often see people like MCs or comedians or whatever, and they'll ask questions. So that just gets the attention off them for a couple of minutes and it puts it on someone else. Because as soon as you turn and ask someone a question, everyone's looking at the other person and they're not looking at you anymore. Um, and that's just a way of transferring the focus off yourself and making someone else deal with it. So it's something to really be aware of, um, especially if you're like emceeing or even if you're just sort of presenting or introducing a piece or someone else. Um, another one which is like terrible for actors in particular is is laughing. And the reason why we laugh so much sometimes is because we are trying to break the tension of holding that focus for ourselves. So, um, so by laughing, or going, <laughs> we, we're breaking the tension or we're breaking the awkwardness that we feel when, when people are watching us. So that's another one. Um, and it's, it's also interesting, I think, to think of these in terms of like, I often notice that women do the checking behavior a lot more than men. Not always. It's not like this is just very general. And then men tend to do the deflecting and, and the laughing a lot more. Um, but again, like watch out for them and see, like, can you notice these things or what are the things that people do when they feel awkward or they feel nervous or they're being watched or they're they have focus? Um, another thing that people can do is like just general self-soothing behavior, like rocking or bobbing or um, little habits that they have that make themselves feel better, playing with their hair. Those kind of things are like self-soothing because they are actually feeling panic at that moment when they're being looked at and they're in the they're in the public eye or um, or they're on stage. Um, another thing is speeding up. So I'm sure we've all been to events where we've listened to people talk or we've watched someone perform and they have just absolutely sped through their entire performance. And that just comes from 
the feeling of just wanting to get it done with and getting it over as quickly as possible. So it's kind of, it's that fight or flight again. So that's the flight element of it that you just want to go, you want to leave. So subconsciously, you just end up going really, really fast through all of your material and then you're gone. Um, and then like, obviously when you're panicking, you do, you, your body is tense. So that's why like as actors, and I'll probably do some more videos about this as well. We tend to do a lot of relaxation techniques before we go on stage to make sure that we don't have that tension in our bodies because that comes out in our voice. Like if your voice is tense, like it sounds really different. Um, and I like things like sweating, sweaty palms um, and shallow breathing. And breathing technique is massive as well when you're performing you want to have the right breath to sustain your voice to the end of sentences and to be able to bring color to your performance and to modulate your voice and do all of those things so um as an actor or performer like you should have a little routine that you do if you experience those kinds of things like panic that you are that you have a vocal warm-up and that you have some relaxation things that you can check in with your body before you go on stage and um, so you can give the best performance that you can and the kind of final one is um really defensive body language and that's kind of a way of protecting yourself when you feel threatened so when you're in a situation where people are staring at you you might find yourself like crossing your arms a lot or like just having really defensive body language where you're like ready. It's like you're ready to fight. Um, and obviously on stage that does not look good. And it like makes the audience feel like a little bit uncomfortable as well because you're like really trying to protect yourself. And then there's another one um, that is possible, but like it's kind of more if there's like multiple people on the stage with a kind of horseplay element or like giving someone a dig or a hit, whatever. Again, that's another way of transferring the focus from you to the other person. So my advice um, as a performer is to know what out of those things um, are your tells or your things that you do when you are in front of an audience. And learn, first of all, not to do any of those things. So when you are in a situation where you can stand in front of a group of people and you're not fidgeting or checking yourself or pulling at your clothes, you're not deflecting the attention from yourself by asking questions, you are able to avoid like corpsing or laughing out of nowhere, you're not doing any self-soothing, rocking back and forth kind of stuff, and you're able to keep your pace at a level where you're not speeding up really quickly and you're not trying to leave as fast as possible and where you are aware and possibly able to control your breath, your tension in your body and you're not sweating too much or you're not in panic mode in front of people and you're able to stand and deliver your message, your piece, your performance, your song, whatever it is, that is your baseline, that's your neutral. And when you're in that neutral space, then you can start to add things to your performance, which we'll go into later down the line. So that would be my first lesson. That's my 101 for performance, stillness, control and learning to deal with focus. So that's it for this video and I'll have some more tips uh, on our on my next one. I'll see you then.